This video is in response to the YouTube science channel, The Action Lab, specifically on something called the Maxwell's Wheel. First off, Action Lab is a great channel. It does simple experiments and the focus is always on the fundamentals. But on this specific video, some explanations were not very convincing. So I added some analysis on top of that and it could lead to some partial disagreements and questions which I'll present here. The observations in the original video was that when the weighing scale is offset to zero and the wheel is undergoing partial free fall while also unrolling from the string, the scale recorded a weight loss of about six gram. The negative reading was fundamentally attributed to the fact that an object under some sort of free fall is equal to partially losing its weight force measured from the fixed frame on the scale. There are some additional interesting observations that become evident uh, when we add all the data together and plot them. So we will first need to overlay the timing data on the original video. So this was done with FFmpeg software tool. Uh, then the displacement of the wheel is tracked on a ruler attached to the uh, display. It's important to understand that we don't need um, absolute units of measurements here. The arbitrary scaling in the plot uh, shouldn't matter much to our interpretations. The time versus displacement graph is uh, sort of an obvious pattern. Uh, using this uh, distance, we can also plot the velocity and acceleration graphs. As you see, the disk is indeed accelerating downwards right from the beginning. When it is rewinding upward, we see that the velocity vector reverses and there is a sharp spike in acceleration. But after that settles, the acceleration vector continues to be in the same direction. So this was explained in the original video as well. We just added the numbers and the graph. Now we can add the weighing scale reading for the apparent weight loss and plot them all together. The other interesting observation in weight loss graph is how smooth it is even in the changeover period. So even if there is a polling limitation on the weighing scale, we see there are no perturbations on the readouts in this region. In this graph, the weight loss is shown in a logarithmic scale on the secondary y-axis to the right. Uh, what's also interesting in the weight loss graph is that it starts with a large negative value uh, here, minus 150 gram, then gradually reduces to the uh, stable minus 6 gram. So this happens over the first one and a half to two seconds. Then it is uh, approximately held at minus six gram. So in a sense, there are two portions to this graph. The first portion is unlikely to be some sort of a noise because we can see a similar observation at a later part of the uh, of another free fall in the original video. So one possible explainer could be that when a heavy wheel uh, begins that free fall, it has a very high inertia of rest due to the large mass. And as it gains velocity and momentum, the inertia of rest gradually decreases and leads into the second portion of uh, weight loss graph. So I have made uh, other experimental videos around the role of inertia in the early portion of free fall, which I will link at the end. So if equivalence of free fall was the only explainer for the entire portion, then the minus six gram should have shown up in the first portion also. So I say that because the acceleration in the dotted gray line is almost stable and constant even the initial portion. Now coming to the second portion of the weight loss graph, the question is whether equivalence principle is the only factor playing out here. What about a gyroscopic effect? Because a spinning object will demonstrate rigidity in space. The question is whether that effect of rigidity is limited to orthogonal planes that is popularly demonstrated during precession or would there be rigidity even when it moves through the same plane in which it is rotating. Of course, the net weight of any stationary spinning gyro does not change. We saw that in the original video as well. But this scenario is slightly different because the gyro is under a free fall. So the motivation for the second question has to do with the smooth graph for the weight loss even as the wheel hits the low point. That has more correspondence to continuum such as the direction of spinning of the wheel rather than the sharp double spike in the acceleration after which it is constant. So in summary, there are two observations, firstly related to the initial portion, which clearly points to a play from the inertia of rest. And a second observational question, if there would be something more than just the free fall equivalence that is playing out in the second portion of the graph. I will try some more experiments when I get a chance. In the meantime, if you have any comments, do let me know.